applying the customer-centric innovation in your business. When GM followed the motto, a car for every wallet, they made five different brands of cars to satisfy different customer segments. It was the demographic model that worked very well in the industrial era, but lacked the fuel to sustain the acceleration in the information era. Contrary to GM's market and the worst, when a Japanese car manufacturers introduced more fuel efficient cars in the American market, they were meeting the psychographic needs of the customers. Finally, psychographic wants began to trump demographical needs of customers. Demographics talk about who your customers are based on location, gender, age group, etc. But psychographics tell more about your customers and more about what they want. Demographics are like a GPS giving you the direction of what the market needs. But psychographics is like your inbuilt GPRS which can Google down virtually anything and everything. Psychographics relate to the ignition of customers' impulse, the, the propensity to purchase your products that make them feel cooler, hip, trendier, or sophisticated, etc. Thanks to all that plethora of knowledge sharing platforms and the dynamic web 2.0, the age of the social era that makes it possible. To apply a powerful customer-centric innovation model, it is very important to recognize the hot buttons of your customer. Hot buttons are nothing but the urgency to do business with you or the core reasons why they want your product so badly. They are called hot buttons. Customers want the best thing that satisfies their concern. And ironically, the best always remain hypothetical as it is a very relative term and it is pretty unachievable. But very often companies fail to understand what a customer wants. Even if they realize it, they typically, it happens after they have delivered a product or a service to their customers, not before. Companies fail to realize customers need before they deliver. Considering this scenario, following what I call a constant customer need analysis or CCNA, which is like a program, this can create a better model for co-creation. Constant customer need analysis or CCNA. Now CCNA is a continuous dialogue that allows companies to clearly identify and address to the hidden needs of your customers. Most of the needs can be observed as frustrations, hot buttons, aspirations and goals of customers. But the real identification is in sharing information with a two-way open dialogue. By applying CCNA and using platforms like customer forums, social media, blogs and Twitter brand conversations, Today, companies can actively engage with customers, understand their primary concerns, needs, and desires, both present and future. Applying CCNA is more like how a reporter and a lawyer will approach a case. There's a friendly investigative tone like, may I help you or can we work on this together? Questions are framed to evaluate and know the right product use, optimization, product enhancement, or other product substitutes or services that need to be associated with your product. The CCNA dialogue is not a one-time affair. It's a constant and consistent CRM exercise even after you delivered your solution. Consider the data residing in survey reports, complaint logs, service and sales call reports, customer opinions on social media, brand conversations on social media, CRM databases, win-loss analysis, the blogosphere, and so forth. If they are pieced together, a broader and deeper picture of the customer experience will emerge. To co-create value and to apply customer-centric innovation, an organization must be plugged into customers sentiment data streams and they must derive it insights that can help them make better products.
to improve the R&D. If your R&D is operating in an isolated environment, totally disconnected or from the customer data points, then you will be ignoring real customer expectations. Also, it's important to interpret what customers want. As Henry Ford aptly said it once, if I had asked people what they wanted, they would have said faster horses. Ford's quote about faster horses isn't really a definitive debunking of market research. Look at it again. Ford's customers didn't say they wanted a safer horse or they want a more comfortable horse. They said they wanted a faster horse. They were perfectly clear about what they really wanted, which, is, which was speed. The truth of the matter is that customers may voice out their needs in a language where the innovator has to really decipher. It's the innovator's job to read between the lines and come up with the right solutions for their customers. In a marketplace where supply can also create demand, we can no longer presume to think what the customers want. We can also hardly assume what the customer wants without entering into customer's world. Therefore, the job of a customer-centric innovator is to figure out what the customers look forward to before they even realize what do they want.